Hey there! Hello and welcome to another exciting new episode of me. Today we'll have a look at this pen. And this pen is... it came in a discrete box. And in there is... Oh yes, that's just one item. That's just the little <clears throat> white sleeve. And in that is the service guide. A lot of pages. And then there is the actual box. This is a Montblanc 90th Anniversary 146, and that is um, aka the Le Grand, right? And this is very similar to the regular 146, except this has rose gold trimmings. So this is the box itself, everything is rose gold, I don't know how well the camera picks that up, but it's all, all these highlights are rose gold. You open the box, then there is the Meisterstück collection, a little information booklet. Uh, it's nothing too fancy, but it is full color and all. It looks quite nice. Uh, and then, of course, there is <clears throat> the actual pen. And what I have here is a um, 149. I couldn't find my 146 so quickly. I just want to show you the difference in trims. So, uh, let me see. At the On top here is the 149 with regular yellow gold trims and this is rose gold now I'll, I'll I know I'm not in focus but I'm just I just want to show you the nibs before I go on so that you can see the difference there too I know that this is not the the greatest of light conditions but it's very hard to make a camera pick this up so you can see again rose gold and yellow gold just so that you have an idea okay for some odd reason, the camera just switched off right there, but we're continuing with the pen. I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, tell what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. Okay, so the 146, um, I have reviewed a 146 before, but I'll just go over the main points again. Here we have, of course, the famous white star, peak of the Mont Blanc, uh, then we have the, the cap in precious resin, then we have the, the clip, center band, uh, that says uh, Meisterstück uh, Mont Blanc. There you go. And then the barrel with the piston turning knob. It's a piston filled pen. Let me refocus there. The cap screws off. And then you have the nib, which I've already shown you, but I'll show you a nice close up there. As you can see, it says 90, 90th anniversary, 4810 for the height of the Mont Blanc. It is solid gold. It is 18K. Um, I want to say 18k, but actually, it's, I no, 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 585 AU. There we go. I was wrong. Um, uh, of course, that's that's 14k. Uh, then the pen has this ink window, which I like a lot. It's a nice feature of Mont Blanc, so you can see how much ink is left. Let's turn this over so that you can see the ink sloshing around there. There you go. And that's pretty much all this to it. The section, uh, rather barrel shaped, there's not really anything to, to, to that really tapers or something, and I think this is a very nice size. So I don't have a, a 149 in rose gold, but just to show you, for me the 149, love the pen, but it's very large. It's a very thick section, and I think the 146 is a very nice compromise that is a nice writer good size. Okay, this nib, by the way, you may see it looks a bit stubby. Uh, it's uh, an oblique double broad, and I've understood that they will uh, no longer be made uh, from 2015 onwards. So, if you want one, grab it. Alright, so this is the pen. What do I like about it? What do I not like about it? Well, I bought this pen as a gift, uh, a special gift for someone. Uh, it's, it's expensive. These are expensive pens, they're not pens that you typically just buy. It's what Mont Blanc does. And of course, there's the eternal discussion of are Mont Blanc pens worth it or not? You know, impossible to answer. Are they precious resin? Yes. Is that actually plastic? Yes. Do they have a gold nib? Yes. But this nib, I was very happy with. My 146, 149, I got those pre owned. Both nibs needed work to write well. This nib wrote straight out of the box, and it was a new pen. Does that mean the nibs have gotten better? I don't know. Maybe it was just because I had pre-owned pens up to this point. Um, this one wrote fine. So I was very impressed. The size is nice. I think the nib quality was nice. And in all, I think it makes for a very pleasant pen. Pleasant to hold, and a pleasant nib.
All right. So that's what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Again, I have another 146 review, so if, if you're just interested in the 146 model, I think I cover things in a bit more detail there. Um, I think the most interesting thing about this is seeing... Sorry, again, the camera shut off. I was going to say seeing how it writes. But before that, a couple of measurements. Capped, I get 145.95 millimeters. That's 5.75 inches. Uncapped. Four point nine inches or one hundred twenty four point seven millimeters section diameter ten point nine that's point forty three inches to eleven point five millimeters or eleven point six I should say to point forty six millimeters uh, the weight of the pen one thing I did want to comment on by the way is these threads what I do like about Mont Blanc Lord is that I don't find these threads sharp you do feel them a little I don't find them particularly sharp all right my scale is on about I would say about half full of ink I have 26 grams so it's not the heaviest pen out there but it's not a super light one either enough talk I think we need to see the pen in action double broad nib oblique double broad fascinating let's have a look at that that's what we'll do next I hope this was useful and I'm glad to see you later bye bye all right here we go with the Mont Blanc Meisterstück one forty six aka Le Grand. This is Mont Blanc Poppy Red. I almost said Poppy Cock Red. Ah yes, Poppy Cock Red, you see? The professor nearly slipped out, but I managed to contain him. And the nib is an OBB, oblique double broad. Now let's see what this pen does. I did that on purpose because I was trying to align the nib there. With obliques you always have to align them properly to the paper, otherwise they don't write, as you can see there, see? Um, so you kind of rotate, you, you, well, you, you would usually maybe write like this, you have to rotate them a little bit into the paper like that, and then they write very nicely. A bit of fast writing, oh, oh, oh it's running dry. There we go. Hasn't been used in a couple of days. Not the pen's fault. I've also found that red inks often do that. They often make my pen skip a bit. Alright, um, wetness. This is honestly the first time I've seen this pen skip. Fascinating. Alright wet enough but of course I've just primed the feet a little now line variation you see there's some natural line variation I'm not very good at writing with obliques you see you can see there's definitely some line variation to be had All right, maybe some reverse writing, probably not very successful with an oblique. Well, actually, I'm surprised. Brings out the stubby quality even more. So there you have it. Writing with a Meisterstück 146, new out of the box, writes pretty well, I would say. Again, I'm not really an expert at oblique writing, but some people love it. I hope this was useful, and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.